You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Good morning and welcome to The Voice of Charity. I am Phil Zepeda here with my colleague Katie Breedeman. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Phil. Katie and I are with Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Chicago, and we are thrilled to be with you here again on this Tuesday morning. Uh, thank you for all of you listening on WNDZ 750 AM in Chicago and those watching on social media platforms, uh, YouTube and Facebook at Catholic Chicago. Mother's Day. It's right around the corner. It's coming up this weekend. How is it already May? This is crazy. Um, and we would like to take this opportunity to wish all of our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, aunts, you know, all nurturing women in our audience, a very happy Mother's Day. And it's a great holiday to ce celebrate all the warmth and love and goodness that all of you contribute to the world just by being you. So, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We'd also like to devote this show uh, to the many ways that Catholic Charity supports mothers and young children. Last year, there were more than 51,000 low-income mothers and caregivers who visited our WIC food centers, traveling from as many as 19 neighboring counties in Illinois, Wisconsin, and Indiana. And that was a 90% increase just from the previous year, due in part to the fact that our WIC centers were among the state's leading providers of infant formula during the national formula shortage. We remember that. Right. That's really a remarkable statistic, Phil. Catholic Charities also served more than 2,200 new and expectant mothers with case management and a wide range of other support services to help them and their infants get the best start possible together. Here on The Voice of Charity, we previously discussed one of these supportive service programs. It's called Transforming Lives. It addresses the serious concerns of expectant mothers who are struggling with substance use while they're pregnant and after they've delivered their babies. According to the Illinois Department of Public Health, each year more than 2,000 people in Illinois lose their lives due to, due to the use of opioids and other drugs. And so substance use continues to be a significant public health, in our, health crisis in our state. So transforming lives helps expectant mothers deal with this difficult situation uh, and, and, and that they and their babies become healthier over the course of the pregnancy and throughout the child's first year of life. Here to provide us with greater information on this life-affirming program are two wonderful guests, uh, Linda Enriquez, who's the program supervisor for Transforming Lives, and Carla Gutierrez, department director for all of Catholic Charities Youth Counseling Programs. Linda and Carla, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. We're so excited to be here and be able to talk about the program. Thank you so much, Carla and Linda. Uh, Linda, may we start off with you? Could you please remind our audience how and when Transforming Lives started? Yeah, so the program started on July 1st, 2019. Um, our funders shared this opportunity, which we at Catholic Charities thought was a great opportunity for us to combine our knowledge, our skills, and our expertise in the home visiting world, as well as the doula world and our substance use world into one uh, program. And so what are the main components of the Transforming Lives program? How do you help women, uh, expectant and new mothers, who are struggling with uh, substance use? So we, the main components were free pregnancy, postpartum services, um, as well as to women struggling with substance abuse. Um, our participants do receive recovery assistance, prenatal and childbirth education, um, the healthy pregnancy advice, including physical and emotional health, support groups, basic parenting supplies, diapers, wipes, um, clothes for the mother as well, and then birth and postpartum doula support. That's really uh, so comprehensive. And I know that each case is so individualized um, and in many cases very sad that the women have had really struggle, uh, many struggles in their life um, so that the, the situation they're in now, they're not happy about it either. They wanna get healthier too, don't they, Linda? Yes, and uh, I think that that's um, where we come in and it's uh, the best feeling where we're able to just provide those services and be able to help moms just get back on their feet and 
help with their babies and also learning them and giving that knowledge of like the birthing uh, process and moving uh, forward to be successful. So uh, how, tell us about like the, the, the population of, of folks that you're working with now. Like, how many expectant and new mothers um, are you working with currently, let's say? So right now we do have seven new mothers and we do huh? have two that are currently expecting. Um, but uh, we do help color, uh, moms in Collar Counties as well as Cook County as well. So you've, you've always got your hands full. <laughs> there seems to be a pipeline of, of, of folks in need. Linda, um, a, a couple more questions. You know, uh, uh, among the expectant mothers coming to Catholic Charities for assistance, what are the most <clears throat> current substances that they're struggling with? You know, is that is that fentanyl? Um, you know, to help us pa paint a picture of us of the types of situations and, and drug use that you're seeing within participants of the program. Yeah, so most people who are enrolled in Transforming Lives program are are in use of some form of opioid. The most common one is uh, in the misuse of it is heroin. Um, testing of the supplies across the city and the nation. Um, ha it has shown us that much of the heroin uh, that is being purchased is laced with fentanyl. So fentanyl is up to 50, 50 times stronger than the heroin, which also means that it could be deadly, that is deadly in even smaller amount, taken in smaller amounts. And according to the Illinois Department of Public Health, um, the leading cause of maternal mortality in Illinois has been the substance uh, use disorder. So the overdosing um, that is also made up around 40% of the total maternal deaths in Illinois, which have been caused by fentanyl. So it, it, this is such a timely topic. You know, Katie and I are recognizing about a week ago there was a there was a piece in the Wall Street Journal yeah. um, that that provided some really interesting statistics that were provided by the 2021 National Survey on on drug use and health. I shared a couple of points that I'll just interject now. About six in a thousand babies nationally have been born dependent um, in each year since 2017. That's just remarkable. And that's <clears throat> according to data from this study, which also indicated that 8% of pregnant women among 60,000 respondents in the, in the survey um, overall had illicit drugs in, in, in the past month and some 1% of pregnant women had taken illicit opioids. Those are just national statistics and what Linda and, and Carla are helping us paint uh, he, uh, a picture for us now of what we're, we're dealing with and we're accompanying um, th these, these women with um, through this Transforming Lives program. I, uh, so it's, it's definitely part of the, the national discussion um, and glad to be part of this discussion here. <clears throat> Linda, talk to us about the, what is the age range for expectant mothers? And what are the first steps in determining the best ways to help them? Yeah, so um, the age ages in our program uh, range from 15 years old to 40 years old. Um, the wide it, It's a wide range of uh, participants that highlight how each substance use recovery uh, journey is um, very unique and important. Um, we do support pregnant and postpartum um, people wherever they are in the recovery process. So some participants um, can feel ready to take big steps um, towards abstinence, while others may take um, smaller steps towards more of like the harm reduction part of it. We do work to encourage um, and make positive changes. And some of the first and most important steps in assisting comes from, from our clients, knowing that we are there to support them. Um, the uh, same as a, a safe place of compassionate, individualized, and person-centered care. Um, we're able to show them the respect and the non-judgment in a way that they have not been given before. Um, so due to the trauma and the stigma um, in this population, it often endures that it can sometimes feel difficult to trust or share with others. So just cultivating a safe space for participants to feel seen and empowered is is a critical step for um assist in assisting that's that's fascinating and you really paint a a, a beautiful picture of the, of that 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 service that that's provided uh to, to women in this program much like you know there's a lot of there's a lot of catholic charities programs that um allow for other program participants to support each other are, are there ways for the expectant and and uh, other expectant and new mothers to support each other in this program 
Absolutely. So we do connect our participants who are in similar stages together frequently. Um, we also have participants that come back to show um, others like the way forward. We also give them time for um, for the babies to socialize and to find the commonality and the issues that they might be dealing with. Car Carla, we'd like to bring you into the conversation and, and talk about the important role that doulas play uh, in the Transforming Lives program. Can you, can you remind our audience uh, what that role is? Yes, I'm happy to. So doulas provide emotional, physical, and educational support to those that are pregnant. Um, and I know my colleagues that were here last time talking about transforming lives talked about the meaning of the doula world or word, which derives from Greek, meaning women's servant. Um, and the emphasis of this work is really giving the full attention to the birthing person, giving them educational tools, information to make decisions about their own bodies and their babies. We're really fully present in the marriage miracle that happens at each birth and to highlight the work that our participants are forming a part of that miracle as well. Right. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had Velma Walker and Nicole Harper Spencer on the show talking about the doula services. And so this is one of the programs in which, you know, the doulas come in and offer that education, uh, childbirth education, child development education, but also just the friendship and the emotional support to women who may be alone during that whole uh, birth preparation process. You know, uh, how, how often do all of your case managers and the doulas uh, work with clients? And I'm just curious, is, is most of it in-home visits? or over Zoom, online? How, how does that work? Yeah, good question. So across of all of our behavioral health programs, Katie, we follow the client's preference. So if the client prefers um, more hands-on support in person or if they prefer telehealth visits, we really accommodate to whatever the client prefers. Um, and so we create a service plan when they come into the program, which we review. And this really allows for participants to identify progress goals and timelines for themselves, which again, really helps um, identify what the client wants to accomplish as well. That's really been one of the blessings of the pandemic, right? There's been so many hardships of the pandemic, but across Catholic Charities programs and services, the, uh, we were forced to go online with many of our counseling sessions. And, and now that the pandemic is over, we're, we're seeing that that's allowing more people to choose how they ob obtain services, you know, which makes it more comfortable. And then, you know, ideally, uh, the, the chances of success are, are higher because they're in a comfortable setting, right? Right, Carla? Very much so, Katie. Yeah. yeah, I think we've been able to not only expand the way we provide services, but also expand services in general. And so the, the client progress then is, is, is gauged on their own uh, template, their own plan that they create mm -hmm. with the case manager uh, in terms of timelines and in terms of what that, what that progress looks like. Is that correct? Correct. They're very much a part of this because these are their goals, yeah. right? And so we want yeah. them to be a part of that. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's really, uh, <clears throat> I, I think we often talk within Catholic Charities about the accompaniment, right? That 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 mm -hmm. we as an organization provide, and it's that 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 counsel. And if it's if it's distant counsel via uh, virtual circumstances or over the phone, I think it's still remarkable. And it's it's the proof point is is the, is the beauty of this program and the way that you're able to help um, these n new and expectant mothers. We're going to come back. We're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back and talk with Linda and Carla about the transforming lives a, a little bit more uh, in greater detail. Right now, you're listening to the Voice of Charity on, Chicago, on Catholic Chicago. Thank you. adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence 
and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847-782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. always say, how can you spend your day with three-year-olds? Seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey and how they grow, this is a very rewarding job. Even though at the end of the day, we're not the highest paid people on earth. And when I have a parent contact me and say, my child loves school, that to me, I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning. Because really you are changing lives. You are molding lives. Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States, and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Welcome back to The Voice of Charity. I'm Phil Zapata, joined with uh, Katie Breedeman. We are talking with Linda Enriquez and Carla Gutierrez of the Transforming Lives program at Catholic Charities. Again, thrilled to have both of you joining us uh, today to really paint a beautiful picture of the services that you provide. Uh, Carla, uh, before we went to, to break, you were really taught, we were talking about this accompaniment. And I'd like to know, you know, how different is it um, from the um, the assistance that's provided to expectant mothers versus the the mothers that already have children. Talk to us. I'm sure it's a nuance, but I'd love to hear uh, in your own words about. Uh, no, it's actually uh, th this uh, this different. Yeah. So I think that um, there's many ways that I can share that. Um, the needs are different. So parents who enter our program after they've already had their baby may have experienced different needs than those that are pregnant. For example, they may have DCFS involvement and so are working on resolving their case, or they may have needs for things like diapers and wipes, um, or are needing to find, you know, food or a stable place to live because maybe now that they have a baby, they're not able to stay with a family member or with the friends before. So the needs are really different and it varies case by case, but for the most part, we tend to see that the needs do change and increase as well. It's 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 remarkable that you've you've got to keep your eye on that, right? That every individual case is is very different. So and it, it takes a village, right? So there's there's medical partners here, mm -hmm. medical professionals. What are other community partners that, that you work with for this program? Yeah, so this program has a lot of partnerships and we continuously work towards fostering these partnerships, nurturing them, but also looking to create new ones, right? Um, and so we work with methadone clinics, harm reduction programs. Our Cook County Jail is a great source of referral for us um, and other social service agencies that our participants regularly need access to, um, as well as internal programs. That is one of the blessings, right? Uh, we have this wide network of Catholic Charities programs and resources that we can refer expectant and new moms to. That's that's wonderful, Carla. The, that that and that's a blessing of being part of the Transforming Lives program. That there is this built-in network of of other services to help them. Um, Linda, can can we ask you what happens if if expectant moms or new moms uh, need to have inpatient treatment? Uh, how how does that work in terms of care of their children? And and how long does that inpatient treatment normally last? Yeah, so um, an average length, length of an inpatient treatment varies based on the, the several factors. Um, some women are court ordered to treatment. Um, the average range is 60 to 90 days. 
Um, in Chicago, there is actually only one facility that is available for women to get the inpatient treatment with their children accompanying them. And that's that's a really important point that that article that Phil mentioned earlier from the Wall Street Journal last week, it mentioned that in the treatment of women who are uh, trying to uh, not be dependent on substances any longer, um, that an increasing amount of study has been showing that it's it's helpful for infants to be with their mother, not separated from their mothers, correct? Correct. Yes. As both as both the women are recovering and any babies who are born with any um, substances in their system that increasingly they're saying keep the children with the mothers and, and that nurturing can be part of the child's recovery. Correct. Yeah. And then that's um, I think that that's one uh, great thing about the facility that they do have available for the, the child to stay with the mother as well um, through the whole process. And um, working with the like you know making sure that there's like no detachment uh issues later on or anything like that so just being able to be there with with mom as well i can't help but think that that aids her recovery as well to stay with her child um can, can i ask how long then are, are women in transforming lives uh in the program and how do you stay in touch with them after the fact so the time uh, again it varies depending on the services that the family may need at the moment um, generally, we do work with people for a full year postpartum. Um, sometimes people need a little bit uh, more of a lengthier program, um, but no matter how long uh, they, someone stays in the program, they, they they continue to stay in touch with us. Um, we have we even had had participants come back to re-enter the program with their second child. Um, so being able to um, help with them and it's it's an honor to just kind of have them back, right? Just, knowing that we can help them. Um, and also before we just start, uh, discharge them from our program, we do work together to establish a community support as well as um, other social services. So <clears throat> Lyndon and, and Carla, both of you, I'll, <clears throat> I'll offer you this. Um, what, what helps bring th these, uh, th the news of this program to life are, are stories that, that, that you've had, that you've experienced of, 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 uh, of our clients and the folks that we serve. And we recognize that these expectant and new mothers often have tragic situations in their lives and have barriers to recovery. <clears throat> can, can either of you share a, a story? Well, can both of you share a story? We'd like to hear from each of you. But what comes to mind in that that might be uplifting or help paint a really beautiful picture of, of the, the services that we're providing here to these women in need? Yeah, so um, actually, um, one of the like uh, stories that comes to mind is uh, a client who was very engaged in our program. She did ex uh, experience domestic violence. She had history of substance use and um, had uh, been homeless until up, uh, up until recently. The father um, of the baby was incarcerated, um, and this is where mom felt a little bit more safer. Um, we were able to support her with things like diapers, financial assistance, and just um, things that would help her get back on her feet. We also did connect her with our domestic violence services, and she is actually currently living with one of her adult children, and is extremely thankful for all the support um, that she was able to obtain from our program. That's, that's remarkable. That's a great story. Remarkable. Uh, Carla, how about you? Uh, a story to share with us? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of my favorite parts of this job, right? Really getting to see the stories. Um, one young mother that came to us when she was pregnant, she was homeless, had really no support as a single mother. And our team, our doula, our case manager helped her with basic needs for both the baby and herself. She was able to find employment at a daycare that allows her to bring her child with her for free. She's been able to purchase her car, live in her own apartment, and is looking to go back to school. And she really credits the program and the staff that she got to work with for all of the support that she obtained during her journey. Yeah, again, just just beautiful, and it gives our listeners an opportunity to connect and bring these 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 this casework uh, to life so much more. So thank you for for sharing that, As Carla. Let me go come back to you. What what do you see as the the greatest challenges um, uh, to each mother uh, achieving success, and what is the program doing to, to minimize those challenges? 
Yeah. So I think there's a lot of obstacles that our clients face, right? From homelessness to the stigma that's associated with our history or current use of substances to limited financial resources and life skills in general. Um, I think we can spend really all morning talking about the many challenges and obstacles that our clients face. We really work with them and supporting them and helping be part of this village, like you said, Phil, um, accompany them on their journey and connecting them to these these services that can meet their needs. I think the most um, important aspect that I think we provide is that support and accompaniment um, and identifying ourselves as part of their village. Indeed. That's a, that's a, a very important point that you know you 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 can only help settle as many uh, problems as, as you can, but they need to own it too. And and uh, but it's hard when there's that many barriers. You know, Linda, can I ask what what do you see are are some of the greatest challenges of case management? You know, with with the people on your team. You know, how, what are the what are the greatest challenges for you guys in supervising um, this program and, and making sure you stay connected and making sure the that the participants reach their goals. Yeah, so uh, for me, uh, being the program supervisor is more of just making sure that I'm supporting um, my team as much as I can, as well as ensuring that we, we're meeting the program goals. Um, for obvious reasons, this is a population that is not as willing to identify themselves due to the stigma that is surrounding substance use. Um, it is challenging to engage clients in, in our services, uh, just because this is where our strong, um, you know, uh, because of the substance use part, but this is where our strong partnerships, both internally and externally, are are key and are able to help us with. So just also learning the doula world um, and also the peer recovery part has actually been really life changing for me. Um, I'm really enjoying being part of this uh, work as well as getting the, um, you know, getting to see the impact of the lives that we have impacted through each client and just serving with this phenomenal team that I am glad to be part of. I think team is the key word there, Linda. You, you, it sure sounds like there's wonderful teamwork with, with our internal and external partners to make this program a success. Can you please share with our audience some contact information for anybody who wants to learn more about the Transforming Lives program? Yeah, so um, if there is any other questions or maybe uh, anybody that is interesting, um, you guys can feel uh, free to call my a cell phone number, um, which is 773-923-5102, or my email, um, lenriquez, E-N-R-I-Q-U-E-C, at catholiccharities.net. Thank so, you so much. Thank you both so much, Lynn and Carla, for providing this update on the Transforming Lives program today and the extraordinary hope and, and healing it provides to expectant mothers, new mothers, and children. Uh, and as we said at the top of the show, we're celebrating mothers on this edition of The Voice of Charity, and we'd like to remind everyone in our audience that we are currently in the midst of our Mother's Day appeal that will raise funds for uh, transforming lives and all the Catholic Charities programs that support mothers and children. You can learn more and donate at catholiccharities.net slash donate, and we thank you in advance for doing so. You're so right, Phil. The very first Catholic Charity slogan back in 1917 was women and children first. And so we're continuing that today by asking everyone associated with Catholic Charities to consider making a donation in honor of your own mother or any special woman in your life. I too thank you, Linda and Carla, for being with us today. Uh, and you really do help transform lives of people. And, and we're really inspired by the work you do. Thank you. Very much so. Thank you both for letting us be here today. Thank you. And we invite all of you back again next week for another edition of The Voice of Charity. For now, this is Katie Breedeman with Phil Zapeta, and we thank you for tuning in and believing in the mission of Catholic Charities. Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media.